In today's LEGO City update, I'm not only adding the tram line, but also designing a new building as well. Let's first of all start by integrating the train tracks into the layout. What I have to do, is get everything on one exact level. I'm doing that by using tiles in the middle of the train tracks as well as a few studs mixed in on the sides. There's actually a reason why I couldn't use studs in the middle. I'll show you that towards the end of the video. For now, I'm quickly skipping over that very repetitive tiling pattern I'm building right there. This is simply the stage I'm in when it comes to building my LEGO city with all the annoying tiling work. But therefore, I've quickly now prepared this next area which is already the plot of land I'm using for the new building I've designed. I've decided to add a bit of color and vegetation and therefore I've exchanged these dark bluish gray plates. And for the new building, of course, at the moment, the roof is missing. I'll build that in just a second. When it comes to the structure of the building, I didn't hold back when it comes to the amount of pieces I was using. As you can see right there, I was using masonry bricks, modified plates, modified bricks, and so on, which really makes this wall look detailed, which I absolutely love. Then when it comes to the roof, this is actually the illegal building technique I'm using. I'm using two by two tiles and not properly connecting them to the studs. As you can see right here, they're all placed at an angle. The reason why this building technique is illegal just take a look. Sometimes the two by two tiles simply jump off the studs. Therefore, this was a bit of experimenting until I got the exact angle right in which I had to connect these two by two tiles with the studs beneath. In order to then finish off the roof, I had now prepared these one by one bricks all stacked on top of each other, which are simply laid on top. And this then perfectly rounds off the roof, especially since the color matches the brickwork around the corners of the entire building. Now, in order to integrate everything into the layer, Layout, it's time for some more vegetation, especially to hide the transition from this green area onto the beginning of the tiling pattern around the building. Behind the building, you might remember that I started rebuilding the rock face leading up onto the upper platform of the city. This is now my third attempt of redesigning this rock face because I decided that I wanted to have this green hill leading up to the rock face that the entire rock face doesn't start at one single height. And now with this new attempt, I was finally satisfied with how the rock face turned out. And of course, as always, it's time for more vegetation. In this case, I was reusing this tree building technique I showed you a few videos ago. This is probably my best attempt at the tree so far. This will now be placed in front of the rock face behind the house and then integrated with more vegetation once again. Although for that area, I have to say I didn't finish the vegetation because I know myself by now and I'll most likely decide to add another building right there at the corner and therefore I'll leave this area at this for the moment. Now it's time to focus on the transition of these two tiling patterns. My initial idea was to use these flower pots I designed using only brick modifieds and then two by two tiles on the sides to simply place them on top of the transition of these two tiling patterns. Really simple solution, but honestly it works. The only thing I didn't like about this solution at the moment was the height of the flower pots in comparison to minifigures, as you can see right here. And therefore I redesigned the flower pots cut the size down in half and then I honestly now prefer this new look of the flower pots which look not only more realistic but also not as big as before. When it comes to the rest of this empty area in the middle, you guys wanted me to add a fountain in the middle so I was experimenting with a few new building techniques using these one by two round plates right there which then allowed me to have this really flexible fountain and then as you can see right here you can simply shape this thing as much as you want until you're satisfied. In my case, I'm simply using a circle. Then I was initially thinking about filling up the fountain using one by two tiles in trans light blue, although I have to say the pattern down below was still visible and therefore I decided, although it's a bit annoying to be honest, to remove a fraction of the tiling I've added in this circle shape until I had the exact size of the fountain and then properly connect all the one by two tiles to the studs down below and then finally use the fountain I've just built in order to hide this transition once again. In the middle, I'm now using these three golden two by two bricks, which might honestly only be a temporary solution because some of you wanted me to add a statue in the middle or something. Just let me know your ideas. But honestly, I also like this touch of gold in the middle of this square right here. 
Now back to the tram line and this is immediately the next question I have for you. How do you want me to end the tram line? From a simple fence I'm adding there to an entire roof covered end station. I can build anything you want. I'm not too sure about what exactly I want to have at the moment. And then when it comes to how exactly the tram line continues, it first of all will go around the corner using only the original Lego curves because in comparison to the normal train tracks I'm adding throughout my city, these curves can be much much tighter and then for the rest of the tram line it will most likely simply follow this row of houses I'll add on the transition from the upper platform to the lower one. And now to go back to the beginning of today's video where I've shown you that I've only used tiles in the middle in between the train tracks. This is actually because I was using the 9 volt motor in order to build the tram. And now this is what happens if I exchange one tile right here with a plate instead. So we have these studs on top and now take a look. The tram, because it's built on the 9 volt motor, can no longer pass this section. It probably would work if I was using the normal powered up motor, but that takes up a lot more space and therefore doesn't work with the tram. Of course, if you look at the tram line from this perspective, it looks a little bit weird having no studs in the middle, but surrounding the tram line. But honestly, from this perspective, which is the normal perspective you have if you're standing in front of the city, it honestly doesn't bother me at all. And then back here, this is my plan at the moment to extend this tiling pattern towards the tram line as well. I'm not sure if I want to make it any smaller, maybe even separate the tiling patterns into two different ways. Don't know at the moment what exactly my plan is right there. And then if we continue to work ourselves around the corner, I'll probably add another building at an angle right here. And then the next row of houses will start integrated into the rock face. I've also talked about this a few updates ago. And these houses will then connect the upper platform with the lower one. So you can enter the house right here and walk out on the upper platform. I think this is a nice way to not have another wall just like around the corner separating these two parts of the city one once again and then in front right here I'll probably extend the entire harbor around the corner as well so we have an L-shaped harbor instead of this long straight line which is a bit boring and repetitive at some point and then this also highlights these three steps in my Lego city right here in front and probably looks much more interesting. And now really thinking ahead into the future back there this is where the Wild West mock is and at some point when this is finished and the entire rest of my Lego city back there is finished and I need more space I'll then connect this platform with this platform and extend the entire city around the corner and then I'll probably also use the tram in order to connect these two parts and then this will be the next part of the city in a few years or something so really thinking ahead just so you know that the tram will be extended at some point. And then of course one final thing I still need to show you is the before and after picture. Unfortunately I forgot to take the before picture therefore I could only use a screenshot from last video. But afterwards this is what one week of work looks like. Definitely some big progress right there as it should be. And with that being said that's it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you again in the next one.